measurements and they might have lost a pound or two they might have lost a couple inches and then I throw it at them so let me ask you this what happens when you go when you go from doing something halfway and then go all in if you were able to get just that amount of result and 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 without really putting all of you into it what happens when you decide to give hundred percent what happens when you give 110 120 what happens when you're able to do that over a long period of time that's what gets me excited. You know, that's what pushes me. It's that possibility of being able to achieve something I've never been able to do before. That's what gets me excited and out of the bed at 4 a.m. That's what keeps me going all day until I get home at 9.30 at night. It's that, that will to grind and that grind that takes you over the top. That's what separates you from the good to great. It's that small little X factor. That X factor of how many days of consistency can I put together? How many days can I constantly push myself? How many days where I wanted to give up, but I didn't? You know, those are the days that I keep track of. I don't keep track of how many days I train, because that's supposed to be a given. I keep track of the days that I wanted to give up, that I didn't want to get up and go and do that cardio, that I, I didn't think that I had it in me, and I did it. Those are the marks I tally. Because when I see all those marks, that, that's what gives me the confidence to keep pushing and keep grinding. And then when I see the results, that, that's another thing that gets me going. You know, so it's the curiosity that keeps me going. It's seeing the hard work pay off and then questioning myself every day. How can I get better? How can I get to that next, that next level? So that's why, you know, part of me does take a little offense when people ask, you know, why do you call yourself an athlete? You know, you're a bodybuilder and you're at the bikini division at that. You know, the bikini division doesn't get nearly as much love you know, as you know, some of the other divisions. And it's very easy to say, I'm not saying that the other divisions don't work hard, because they do extremely hard. You know, they have to have even more muscle mass, they have to get even more conditioned and even more lean. But I don't think that takes anything away from bikini. I think it's a very subjective sport. And people ask me, you know, why do I call myself an athlete? Because I train like an athlete. Why do I call the, the clients, the, you know, people call them clients, I call them athletes. You know, why do I call my athletes athletes? Because I train them like athletes. We do track workouts, we do speed, agility, and quickness training. We do the same type of training as a basketball player, as a football player, as a soccer player. You know, I am a product of all the sports I've done in my life. I've done track and field, I've done cross country, soccer, volleyball, basketball. You know, I played at the D1 level. So I'm a product of everything in my past. I've been a sponge, I've taken all the best training techniques from all the different trainers I've worked with, all the different strength and conditioning coaches. You know, my UFC gym family, I mean, our family is so extensive. Every time, whether I'm in another state or another city, I'm always learning and I apply all those techniques to my own training as well as my athletes. So that's why I can confidently say, yes, we are athletes. We train like it and we want to demand that respect by training our butts off day in, day out, no questions asked.